This is Michael Dalamatha with part two of hour two of the Test Driven Development in Visual Studio course that I'll be teaching on October 26, 2010. In part one, we saw a very simple, almost kludgy way of building our first test. Now we're going to see how to do it the right way. We start off by saying File New Project and then choosing a Windows console application. And then we immediately add a test project. So I should say that as with all of these things that we're doing here, we're going to be making some mistakes that are similar to the mistakes that a beginner to this would make. So we now look here and we say, jeepers, what happened? I thought that we had created a console application plus a test project, and we only have one project. What has happened? So let's look into this. Let's first of all see if we can add, oh, here we can add a new project, and we can go to Windows, console application, add the console application. Oh, here we go. Here's our console application and we have a test project associated with it. Okay, so that's critical. Okay, we're going to increase the screen size so that we know what's going on and we'll increase the screen size here as well. Okay, and now we start writing tests. Okay, so that's what test driven means in part. It means that we're driven by tests. So we don't think of ourselves as testing the code. We think of ourselves as testing the customer requirements. So remember, the customer has a car. Okay, so let's say car a car equals new car. Now, we haven't actually written these classes, so we should expect to get an error. And in fact, we get an error. We get these squiggly lines. Okay? Now, we can right-click on these, and we can generate them. We can generate a class, or we can generate a new type. When you do this, you should generate new type. If you generate class, what will happen is that this class will be created inside of the test project instead of being created inside of console application 1. So we're going to just try this so that you see that in case you make that mistake. So we say generate class and boom, here it is. It's car.cs in test project. If we go over to car.cs, you see that the namespace here is test project 13, 3, which is definitely not what we want. We want this car class to be generated inside of console application 1. So let's go ahead and remove this. And we go back here to the unit test and we say generate new type. And you see that the default here is test project 3, but we want to create it in console application 1. Now you'll see that Visual Studio will automatically add console application 1 to the references and add a using statement. And if you remember from part 1, we struggled with this. We actually wound up changing the namespace. Now you see that Visual Studio actually does do this for us automatically if we do it in the right order. Okay, so here we have car.cs where we wanted it. We have console application 1 added to the references of test project 3. And we see that the squiggly lines are gone. Now we say int foo equals a car year. And we get another squiggly line here because we have yet to create it. So we want to generate this method stuff. And if we go over here to car.cs, we'll see that Visual Studio has created a method 
it's a year and it's telling us that we haven't implemented it. So if we run this, we'll get this not implemented exception. Let's continue writing our test. We're going to say assert r equals okay, object expected okay, and that's going to be 1970 object actual. Okay, now when we write our tests, we want to make sure that they first start off by failing, okay, to make sure that we're testing something real. It's possible that we write a test, we think it's doing the right thing, but it passes not because it, the test, the code is actually correct, but because the test is not correct. So we should make sure that it doesn't work first. Now we're going to run it. The first thing that's going to happen is that it says, it threw an exception. So we should come here and implement the actual code. And then we go back to unit test and we run it again. And we see that it tells us that it expected 1970 and the actual was 1965. So we've successfully failed. And now we run the test once again and it should now pass. So that's an excellent example of how to do a test using the test-driven development approach and this is the right way to do it.